Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we'll learn how to build an emergency stop button for your 3D printer or laser engraver. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. This episode of the BV3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to make an emergency stop button. Now you can use this with your 3D printer or laser engraver or pretty much any piece of electrical equipment that runs on AC line power and doesn't draw too much current. So why would you even want something like this? Well, there may come a time when you want to make a 3D printer or desktop laser engraver stop what it's doing right this second. Maybe there's a horrible spaghetti monster taking over the print bed, or an awful blob attacking the nozzle, or the stepper motors are making a heck of a racket trying to go beyond their range of travel, or you were trying to laser cut some cardboard and you turned your back on the engraver for half a minute and then you smelled smoke. And in that moment of panic, the location of the power switch may not come immediately to mind. Is it on the front of this machine? Is it on the left side, the right side, way around back? So what better target for making sure you can cut power to a piece of equipment than a big red panic button sitting right next to it? With one slap, power is off, and then you can take a second and calm yourself and deal with pulling that glob of plastic off the hot end or putting out the flames on that piece of cardboard, or fixing whatever it is that made you want to stop everything in its tracks. And that's the thing we're going to build today. And we have to build it, because I looked for something like this and I couldn't find it. I mean, I could find the button. It even has its own enclosure. But I couldn't find an emergency stop button in an enclosure with a power cord that actually switched something off. So what I could find after looking for a bit was a foot switch that could turn on or off a piece of equipment. You can turn it on by putting your foot on the pedal and turn it off by removing your foot from the pedal. So I ordered both the emergency stop button and the foot pedal from Amazon and it cost me just a little bit over 30 bucks. The foot pedal is rated at 15 amps at 125 volts AC. And since common AC wall outlets in US homes are also 15 amps at 125 volts, the wiring on this switch is a match. In other words, anything you could safely plug into a wall outlet, this wiring will handle it. The emergency stop button, however, is rated at 10 amps. Now I looked this up online and that corresponds with about 1200 watts. Since the power supplies on most of my 3D printers are under 350 watts, and 350 watts at 120 volts is under 3 amps, I'm pretty sure this 10 amp switch can handle it safely. So let's get this foot switch and this emergency stop button playing nicely together. Now I want to point out an important safety notice. We're working with dangerous, even deadly amounts of electricity. If you are not 100% confident in your ability to safely work with 120 volts AC, please do not attempt this project. Just so we're clear, don't do this if you don't know what you're doing. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you're dying. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at this button. It actually has two switches in it. One is on when the button is in, the other is on when the button is out. Since the whole point of this button is that your equipment is on while the button is out or up, and slapping it in turns your equipment off, we want to use the switch that's on when the button is in that out or up position. The orange side of the switch is the part we want. When the switch is not pressed in, the orange side is on. When the switch is pressed in, the orange side is off. Now let's turn our attention to the foot switch. It's held together by the hinge pin, so we need to remove that to get to the actual switch part inside. The hinge pin is held in place by this screw. So remove the screw and then you can push the hinge pin out of the foot switch. When you do, the two halves will separate and the spring inside may or may not go flying across the room. It's okay, it won't be needed any longer. Next, we need to remove the switch. 
it looks like a big end stop switch, really. First, remove the two screws holding the power cable's strain relief in place. Then remove the two screws holding the switch itself to the base of the foot pedal. On this switch, the wires are soldered in place. So cut them from the switch and then set the switch aside. Pull the cable out of the body of the foot switch and set the body aside. Trim a bit more of the insulation away from the cable to give you more wire to work with. The green wire wasn't connected to anything inside the foot switch, but the end of it wasn't covered. So I recommend putting a small wire nut on the end of it just to make sure it doesn't contact anything it shouldn't. Strip some insulation from the ends of the black and the white wires. Then crimp fork connectors on the ends of the white and black wires. After crimping each one, give it a tug to make sure it's secure. With the fork connectors crimped on the white and black wires, pull them through the hole in the emergency stop button's box. Then screw the fork connectors to the terminals on the orange side of the switch mechanism. This strain relief is something I designed in Tinkercad and printed in PLA. The cable slides into the strain relief, then the other part snaps into the strain relief to secure the cable, and finally the whole strain relief snaps into the body of the box. Now it's time to mount the button in the box. So unscrew the red button cap, then unscrew the chrome retaining ring. Insert the button into the hole in the top of the box, add the ring with the words emergency stop on it, and secure it with the chrome retaining ring. Then screw the red button cap back onto the switch. Arrange the wires neatly inside the box and screw the two halves of the box together. I finished the assembly by adding some rubber feet to the bottom of the box. Okay, so the assembly is complete. Now I want to test this emergency stop button and that's easy to do. I'll use an Ender 3S1 for this. So I have the emergency stop button's power cable plugged into an outlet and I have the printer's power cord plugged into the emergency stop button's pass-through port. The emergency stop button is in the stop position. When I turn the printer's power switch on, nothing happens yet. I'll twist the emergency stop button to reset it, and the printer turns on. Now, in the event of an emergency, I can slap the emergency stop button, and the printer will stop in its tracks. This is awesome. A big red, oh my gosh, stop right now button that I can slap in a moment of panic or terror. Now, this is great with a 3D printer, and if I had a desktop laser engraver or CNC machine, I would definitely want this alongside it and it's rated to work with anything that draws up to 10 amps or 1200 watts. Links for the foot pedal and the emergency stop button are in the description. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.